Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, before you tonight we have a waiver request from Mr. Mike uh, Salisbury, the developer of Southgate 3rd Edition, for the waiver of a pedestrian path within that subdivision. So just to orient yourselves, uh, Southgate 3rd Edition is outlined in red and sending your screen. You've got the White Avenue roundabout here uh, to the left of your screen. Uh, Notting Hill Drive, this is predominantly single-family residential development within Southgate 2nd Edition. Uh, Robinson Park Road, you can see here to the, the north part of your screen. <coughs> Got uh, Area City Impact, so the, the city limits boundary is directly adjacent to the east of this property, uh, and it predominantly contains uh, rural residential with uh, Lundquist Lane and Flomer uh, to the east there. Looking at the original phasing plan of Southgate 3rd Edition, it was originally proposed to be developed in three phases. Developers started out with phase three and is now moving on to phase one. Uh, so that would be the extension of Granville uh, to the east, as well as Castleford uh, to the east as well, and Chelsea Court cul-de-sac. Looking at what uh, was approved as part <coughs> of those pedestrian pathways, there was uh, f four pedestrian pathways that were uh, proposed within the original subdivision. Uh, which was approved in 2008. In 2015, uh, the developer had submitted a waiver request to um, waive this, the pedestrian path outlined in red, uh, your screen there. Also part of the waiver uh, was to construct the two pedestrian pathways that extend to the east out into the county, uh, one here as well as one here up to Lundquist. Uh, there was uh, the, the part of the waiver that concerned those two pedestrian paths was the timing uh, of the construction of those, not necessarily waiving the pass. Uh, the developer was requesting to, uh, to <coughs> delay the construction of those paths uh, until such time as uh, the houses were built within the subdivision. And so the council had uh, denied that part of the request, but they did approve uh, the waiver of the pedestrian path that ended up going from Hampton Court uh, down to Notting Hill Drive. And so when this originally was approved in 2008 and the conditions were imposed, uh, there was some discussion about uh, pedestrian pathways and really the intent of these pedestrian paths was to provide better access from the upper portions of the subdivision uh, down to Milton Arthur Park, uh, which is the park that's part of Southgate 3rd Edition uh, in the northeast corner of your screen here. There was some discussion at the council level uh, regarding the pathway just going straight down from Hampton Court uh, down to Castleford. Uh, it was determined that there was most likely going to be a substantial number of stairs required as part of that pedestrian pathway, and it was uh, relocated here to the west and subsequently waived by the council in 2015. And so uh, the, the pedestrian pathway for the waiver tonight is outlined in blue. Uh, you can see it here in the center, essentially goes from uh, Castleford down to Chelsea Court, uh, intended to provide better access, pedestrian access, down to Milton Arthur Park. This was the uh, engineer drawing uh, plan view that was submitted uh, by the uh, developer. You can tell between lots six and seven, uh, this is Castleford here. Uh, about 26 stairs go down uh, the six feet wide and then tapers into a five foot wide uh, sidewalk that ends up connecting to the sidewalk in Chelsea Court. This happens to be uh, another easement. There is no path over here, it's just here. This would be a side profile of the, the stairs and the pathway in question. Like I mentioned, about 50 feet long, uh, 26 stairs uh, going down to the, uh, the other portion of the sidewalk contains a metal railing uh, in the center of the, the stairwell. Did a little analysis as to the actual distance saved, uh, taking this intersection here, which is uh, probably a, a point that uh, a lot of uh, people would drive or walk to to access uh, the, the subdivision. So uh, looking from the, uh, the, the purple line here walking along the sidewalks ends up being about uh, 0.2 miles. If you were to take that same intersection and walk uh, east on Castleford, end up going down the, the stairway, uh, the pathway uh, outlined in yellow here, 
and accessing the park. It ends up being about 0.15 acres, so saves you about 250 feet from that intersection. 0.15 miles. Oh, acres. 0.05 miles. Sorry, zero five sorry. Miles. Excuse me. I meant miles. Sorry. So it saves you about uh, 250 feet um, when you look at it that way. Wanted to point out the Transportation Commission did review the, the request that happened January 12th and the Commission recommended denial of the request. Uh, this was before Public Works Finance last week and uh, they recommend <coughs> approval and uh, staff's recommendation is either to approve the waiver request, deny the request or take such other action as deemed appropriate. I'd certainly be able to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, Jim, this was heard on the 23rd right. as yeah. was a previous thing. Yeah, uh, there was some discussion about, you know, the, the amount of um, steps that that saves someone going to Milton Arthur Park from the junction there where the pathway would go and the amount of expense that, that we're imposing upon the developer in order to save a relatively small number of people a relatively short amount of distance. And uh, Mr. Steed said that uh, in his experience in his subdivision, the stairway that's there and the pedestrian path, it's used a lot even though it doesn't go any place, but people use it for exercise. And, and, uh, and I think uh, I felt that uh, if you're doing things for exercise, why do you care about another five hundredths of a mile in, in walking around? And it doesn't go to a school. It doesn't go to a place of employment or a, a church or anything like that. It just goes to a park. So it's, it would seem like it would take you probably about less than a minute to walk that extra, and it's more uh, um, accessible to people in wheelchairs, handicapped people, to go around on the sidewalk. So it seemed like a, um, an unreasonable burden, or at least a reasonable exception, that we would say um, that we would allow this exception. And uh, I think two out of three of us agreed on that. John. Uh yeah, I, uh, I sat in on Public Works and Finance and came to the same conclusion uh, that Jim did, that uh, uh, unfortunately if uh, there's no way that you can help people in wheelchairs on any of these, uh, you know, it'd be quite a rodeo if you put in a flat piece of concrete and started them at the top and said, I hope you make it to the bottom in one piece. But as far as the exercise level and as far as the, like Jim said, the amount of extra steps, uh, I think that uh, the extra cost uh, does not uh, really help with the uh, uh, amount of space or the amount of uh, uh, foot traffic that you need to use to get there from one way or the other. I have a question for Public Works um, and Finance. Um, so to me, thinking about kids, and that's a major intersection where the roundabout is, and kids are going to want to cut straight, and instead of taking them to the sidewalk and around, that's kind of who I think of going through that way. I agree with all of you on the, on the accessibility for the wheelchairs, but um, in terms of um, cutting through neighborhoods, you know, that's a possibility that it could be accessed more by kids because when we look at all the houses that are going in there. I just wonder if that was considered. I don't know. Address that because yeah. the, all the people that are going to live in that neighborhood will have access from the, the street with the cul-de-sac on it yeah. directly to the park. Uh -huh. So people using that would be from the other, another phase of the subdivision. Uh -huh. So in order for them there's a pretty small, and, and those would be the main users of that shortcut. Mm -hmm. So it's a relatively small number of people that are going to live in those dozen houses in that other phase of the construction thing um, that, would, that would be using that, in, and it would go through someone else's neighborhood that may prefer that people go around on the sidewalk rather than walking through their yard. I'll take Walter and then Art. Catherine, I couldn't totally hear what you were saying because you were turned away from me a little bit. But Sorry. if you're talking about accessing, if you're talking about living on this cul-de-sac and wanting to go walk up to your neighbor's house up here, you're going to do this as opposed to going up the proposed stair and walkway. Um, I was the, the <laughs> no vote on the committee because I have built 
two of these in town. One of them, I was a project manager in the city, required a, a stairway. That one had a destination. It was from Shetland Court to the University of Idaho. Another one I built was you know, from Panorama down to a wheat field, uh, which is now Trinity Baptist Church. It was not known the church would be there. It was not known that Good Sam would be built back in that corner. Um, but the city required, because of neighborhood access, that stairwell, um, and we built it. Um, the latter one I have used to, to go around the neighborhood, to walk around and, and so forth. Um, I talked to Jim this morning about this a little bit and moved a little bit toward his position, which is it's not that far to get to the park. Um, I could probably vote to do away with it, but I would, it would not be to give the developer a break. I mean, I, it would, my consideration of the people that live in this area and whether or not it would be beneficial to them. Uh, an additional question, if I may, Mr. Mayor, for staff. If this stairway and sidewalk are, uh, if, if the council agrees to, to do away with them tonight as requested, what happens to the easement? Do we do away with it as well, or, is it, or does, it, does it just lay there forever? The easement would still remain. Why? Yeah, um, right now it has been platted as a public easement, and you'd have to do a vacation if you wanted to take care of it, um, take it away. And that wasn't requested apparently for this um, at this time. Okay, we're going to go to Art next. Art? Yeah, on this one I'm very much on the fence because I'm not a great fan of cul-de-sacs for any number of reasons, coming down to parking, snow removal, and everything else. But given Moscow's topography, I can see more and more of them coming on. And as such, I don't think any waiver that uh, may be given to a developer to avoid providing cut-throughs between cul-de-sacs and other destinations uh, should be setting a precedent on anything. But in this case, it would seem that the distance saved, the access, uh, given the steepness of those hills, probably is not going to be a major impact on the community if it doesn't go in. So I can see getting rid of that cut through, but uh, hoping that people don't see this as any kind of a precedent setting move to disallow cul-de-sac to other destination cut throughs. I will remind council that because an action would or would not happen tonight is not a precedent for anybody. Okay, uh, I will question. go with uh, Gina. I haven't heard Gina yet tonight on this. Well, I have to say thank you, sir. I am I am concerned as well about neighborhood kids mm -hmm. and and getting from that lower part of the division up to or down to down to the park. Correct. My correct. Right. Um, you know, I guess though, honestly, whether or not there's a staircase there, if they find that to be the shortest route, they're going to yeah. take it anyway. You know, kids are kids. So I. I I think I'm landing on the side of not uh, allowing this to to be. Um, I, I would like to keep it. I would like to keep it. I have another question. Okay, Catherine. Uh, my question has to do with the design. You know, they have the 26 steps and stuff. Is there an and and then and people were talking about wheelchair accessibility. Um, does the easement ever allow for there to be um, a, a a more gentle grading? Or, you know, not a switchback. Switch back. But yeah. I mean, yeah, like is there landing. space for that, or is that a typical not, thing? Not the way it's planned. I mean, the way you look I mean, at it, it's just yeah, you, straight up. You have a uh, essentially a 15-foot wide easement there, and it's centered on that 15 feet, so no. And the code says only 15 feet for the easement. That's all you have to do. That's just what was platted at yeah. the time. John, did you have another Well, question? the only other thing I was going to say, Mr. Mayor, is is uh, you know I'll go back and say yeah the number of steps is a lot of steps and that will never be able to be used by anybody that uh, is in a wheelchair on crutches and for the most part a cane and um, the thing about the kids yeah kids are kids and they're going to kind of go whichever way they want to go regardless of the steps and um, I, uh, I I'll stick with my original position that uh, uh, the distance added uh, by going around 
is not so great that uh, it would uh, involve a, an imposition to anyone. And as far as getting up to from the cul-de-sac up to see your neighbors across the street, there again, walking around would not increase the amount of imposition to the neighbors. So um, I think that, uh, well, I know I'm going to, I'll go with uh, giving the uh, subdivision request for uh, a waiver on uh, low stairs. All right. Uh, another question relative to the existing easement that's not being cleared at this time. Who takes care of it and who's responsible for that yeah. swatch of land should the waiver be granted? It would be the um, property owners on either side. Just like any other right of way that is not used currently, if you're on a corner lot and there's a right of way for utility, and that utility doesn't go in there in this grassy area or whatever, you have to maintain that. Isn't that correct, Rod? Right, the adjoining property owners are responsible. I have Jim. a question for Rod as well. As far as that goes, if there's an easement there and it becomes an orphan path that's used by children or mm -hmm. people or whatever, mm -hmm. there's nothing preventing people from using it as, that, as such, is there? Th that the purpose of it was for public access. Whether it's developed, I'm not sure if that will make the difference. So, you know, there's nothing preventing it from being developed further in the future if someone de desired to do so, if the property owners desired to do so. And there's nothing preventing it from being used as a, an orphan path um, for children to make their way down to that cul-de-sac, whether or not there's stairs on it or not. Whether, correct? I would just say that the purpose was for a pathway for people to travel through, and if it's not developed, it, it probably wouldn't look much like a path. Yeah. So at some point, the um, adjoining property owners may want to come in and ask council to do something. And that would be an option available to them, correct? Okay, everybody has. Mr. Gary, Mayor, Gary, Gary did you have a point you wanted? I was going to say we <clears throat> typically don't encourage citizens to use unimproved paths in the city. It can be dangerous. We don't exclude them typically. It's like using a parkland that isn't fully developed. Um, if the property owners or the subdivider wishes to come in and ask the council to vacate that so that the adjoining property owners can exercise full dominion over that property. They certainly can do that. They just have not chosen to in this case. Mm. Okay. John. I would, uh, I would move that we approve the uh, waiver request um, on the uh, Southgate third edition subdivision. Uh, concerning the uh, air pathway uh, stairway system connecting the uh, platted Chelsea Court cul-de-sac to the currently undeveloped portion of Castleford Street. Second. Okay, John made a motion and Jim made a second to approve the waiver request as it is outlined in our packet. Uh, Question before we start. Just want to make sure if I vote no, then I'm saying I want the path. That's right. That's okay. correct. Just making sure. That's correct. No <laughs> Just want to make sure. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> I'll start to roll with Walter. No. Aye. Aye. No. No. Aye. So we've got a three to three. Yep. And I vote yes. 